Hey guys, this is Joe Barrett, and welcome back to episode 11 of Paint Biology 101. Uh, today, I'm basically going to bring you through a little lesson in what I like to call heads up paintball and cruise control. And uh, we'll finish out with how you can uh, drill and learn how to do this more effectively and make your game a little bit easier. Um, so let's get right into it. Basically, what I mean by playing heads up paintball and cruise control is by remembering the, uh, the number one primary job you're supposed to be doing and uh, staying to that while you're doing other things and getting down the field. Uh, paintball is very much about jobs. It's very much like a chess game when it's played right. And, um, you know, when you're in certain situations, such as if you have a free side of the field or something like that, there are obviously priorities you have. Like, you know, you have the ball, you have to work down that free side. Um, if somebody has only made it out so far on the field, let's say the other team has only made it out here, somebody's job is to contain that guy so he doesn't get all the way to the tape of the field and make the game slow down, you know, make himself harder to dig out from the snake side or people downfield. Um, obviously there's a job in making sure that side doesn't get filled any further. So by playing cruise control, you basically remember your, uh, your primary job while also like just doing other things. It takes away the thought, you know, you don't have to freestyle in your bunker. Um, you just remember to stay doing your part of the machine. Um, this is going to be helpful in two different situations. The first one is going to be for getting someone down the field and not having a threat right in front of them. Um, this is a big mistake I see all the time in, you know, normally beginner or regional paintball where a team will have a good breakout to get somebody right to the 50 off break or quickly thereafter. Um, but there's not really somebody set to contain behind them. This player kind of gets in there just looking cross field for kills and somebody is able to quickly match up with them, if not bunker them out, and basically make that early on move worthless. So uh, this move is going to help guys get up there and be able to play long enough to be effective and have control of the game going on around them while they're up in the key spot. Um, the other thing this drill is going to be very good for is for those fields where you generally always lose your front player off break. Um, a good example would be the last field for the PSP, uh, PSP Dallas. It had a very low open snake side until you were at the snake, uh, consisting of just multiple mini A's on the way there, and basically only took one, maybe two shooters from that center area to kill any front runner going to snake, god, corner, um, it's just a, you know, it's a very low probability run. Uh, in that case, your insert player has a very, very important job of not only staying alive so you have presence on that side of the field, but continuing to fill up that side of the field. And that's what this drill is basically going to teach you. You know, as long as you don't have two or three players left, as long as you still have somebody to watch over you, um, you basically still need to have your inserts attack down the side of the field. If your inserts just fill into the corner and go right into defense for damage control, um, that's a good thing. You know, you're going to slow the game down, but now there's not really an attacking presence down that side of the field, and you're going to have to rely on the other side of the field to win this game for you. So let's talk about what I mean uh, over on the Dorito side in example. Um, this might be one of those layouts I was talking about where let's say just nobody can make the Dorito one or corner. The safe spot is this first insert Aztec out the Dorito way. So if you have a runner going out here on both teams and he's always getting shot, a lot of times you're going to be mirrored up with your other insert Aztec and Aztec. Um, here's how you're going to play that situation most effectively. You're the only guy out here. So you could shoot at snake side and have your center player or a cross field player cross up with you and you play zone, you play slow, if you still have a snake front player, he has the ball, he can continue attack, but you're basically sacrificing any kind of push or attack down the Dorito side. Now you know your snake side is going to be the side to win this and right now that's a hole in your game plan basically. Uh, your team is not versatile across the board, um, whether the second guy is a bigger, slower player or the center player has already filled out the other way. This player is playing defense and that's keeping him alive, but that's just not really helping your D side. So you're going to play heads up, basically cruise control paintball to still work your way down D side and cause pressure on their other side of the field, but you're going to do it while staying in control. Um, so the basis of this would be off break. Um, you know, regardless of if you have another center player watching over you and containing your side, you basically have to keep heads up and contain your mirror. 
Um, that would be this right here, represented by this circle. Uh, I'll explain that later when I set up the drill for you guys. But these circles are just going to be barrels to shoot at and basically just teach you exactly how to do this before you put it in match situation. Um, so right now, priority number one is make sure he doesn't get wider than you. You know, as long as he doesn't get out of this Dorito and pinch you further in towards the snake side, you're, you're at least doing priority number one right. You're containing the side, they're not getting out D side and slowing the field down. Number two is to start getting going down the side. Hopefully your center player is still bottled up waiting to come up behind you, but even if not, you're going to start going down the side. So um, basically the intermediate version of this is whenever you have the ability to move, whether someone's not looking at you from the other side of the field, uh, there's no paint going by you from your mirror or people in the center, you're going to move out still on your gun, on your mirror, and take a seat in your next bunker and just keep shooting at that side of the bunker. Now your angle gets slightly more intense rather than heads up on him. If he's playing a little loose, you might get a kill on his hopper or face. But for the most part, even if he's playing smart to you, he's slowly getting pushed more towards the snake side of his bunker and losing space to live. Um, as you can imagine, the further you bump, the worse is this going to get for him until you're eventually at this 50. Uh, basically, you know, right in his face, heads up in, in front of him, and if he isn't able to press in and live from your snake side players, he's now dead. You're either going to get a kill on him, or he's going to tuck in to evade you, and he's going to get shot from your snake side players. So that is basically how you want to handle this. You know, your your one on one fight on the field is against your mirror, that other insert player. If he beats you out here and up the side of the field, pressing you in then you might be losing this game on Dorito's side. Um, the second step would be, and this is kind of uh, going more towards what I was talking about in World Cup where uh, the layout, you just never really have a front guy. The second step would be, let's say you're not uh, the first guy out in control of somewhere you stuck in the back. You're both the two, or maybe you're the two and your head's up with a one and a second guy waiting, now you're in a two on one downfield. Um, this is what you're gonna add in to continue doing this exact same job. And I know this because I do this a lot on snake side by myself. And you're basically just taking away the risk from the second guy. So you're staying heads up on your mirror. You're um, you know, either you know, just staying, keeping on your gun and controlling him so he can't shoot at you. He's either zoned, like you know, rolled back on your next spot or you can see he switched off of you and he's shooting across field. You might see the paint or the smoke coming out the right side of his bunker. Um, at this point, what your next objective to do, if you have a second guy watching over him from the middle or you're in a two on one heads up down field, is to either wrap or do up downs and try to put paint on that second guy, which would be this guy in this situation. Um, you know, whether you kill him or not doesn't really matter. The point is you need to put paint at him so he dies or at least goes in and you can bump through that spot without paint there now. Um, once you get there, you don't continue fighting him on the inside. You don't look for kills. You run and gun into your bunker, keeping him in, and you switch right back to the outside back on your guy. That was job number one, remember? If you are for some reason taking an extra bite or you're gunning at this guy and then you decide to sit here and shoot something that's maybe hanging out, that's the second that this player has to just dip out into the corner and then maybe catch you slipping down the wire because you come out looking for his old bunker or you lose track of him and he shoots you on later in the game. So number one goal, remember, is keeping this guy where he is. Once you get into your next spot, every time you bump, right back on this outside guy. Then you wrap again, try to put some shots at this guy, bump into the next bunker, right back on that outside closest guy. Once he's dead, this game is going to get a lot easier. If you shoot this player out, great. But if you shoot this player out, it's going to have a lot more effect on the game and it's going to speed it up a lot more. As long as this guy is alive and God forbid he fills even further, this game is going to be slow because they'll have a full, full spread, whether you shoot this player out or not. Now they don't have an insert or somebody to kind of support one side or the other, but this player is basically a waiting insert. He doesn't really have effect on the game right now. He's just throwing a zone somewhere or trying to stop people. So this is the guy that you're focused on either killing or bullying out of his bunker with your snake side players. Number three that you're going to add to that, and this is kind of the more advanced level. Um, I don't even see this in you know most lower divisional national paintball is being able to contain your mirror, 
putting the guy who's holding you if you have to force your own move because you don't have a support player, and in that move, probing for a possible kill. This is what I mean by that. Let's say you've already put in your mirror and you're in Dorito 1. You're slightly outside the widest guy shooting at him. Uh, what I told you last time was you're going to have to wrap or put pop shots on the center player to put him in in order to move and get back on this. Um, once you've got those two steps pretty down, you know, you've mastered step one, bumping down the side to the 50 while containing your mirror. You've mastered step two, being able to put in a support guy or win a two-on-one heads-up fight downfield and still beat the other team to the 40 or 50 bunker. Step three is finding free shots on the way there. And this is what I mean by that. In Dorito 1 to Dorito 2 move is the first time you're going to be able to shoot this guy out of the other side of the field. You're going to have a cross shot on a pack hanging out if he's looking the other way. If he's playing the inside of his bunker wrapping but not shooting in front of you, you're going to see his whole body. This is your chance to get a free kill without having to gunfight, without having to hope somebody fills wide and gives you a free kill through a lane. Here's the time when you're going to shoot directly somebody inside and they're not shooting anything back at you. That's a free kill. That's no risk. That's something you want to do. Here's what you're going to do to do it right. You're going to put in that center guy and coast across just throwing paint at him. As soon as you're back in there though, you're right back on the outside guy. Why? Because if you sit there shooting on the inside fighting him and you don't hit him immediately, it's not a guaranteed kill. So you're, you're risking trying to take a possible kill for getting back on the guaranteed slow side of the field that you're already in control of and winning on. If he fills out while you're doing that because you didn't switch out over or you don't have a support guy who's been shutting down your side of the field, now pretty much being at the 50 isn't doing much for you because you're going to be the one pinched between him on the wire and this player shooting crossfield at you. And now you have to gunfight to get a kill. That's not what you want to do. That's not paintball cruise control. So back to the point. You come through this gap, shooting a few, hopefully hit his pack, something, get a free kill, get right back on that outside guy. Now you're not going to waste time and give him a chance to fill, and you might not have your hopper hanging out and get it shot from the center guy you put in for a second while you're trying to shoot for a difficult shot kill anyways. Um, lastly, as you're doing that, you, you go, you know, you can do it another time uh, bumping through for the 50 gap at one's further upfield. The further up the field you get, the more exposed those crossfield bunkers, aside from this insert bunker, are going to be. So you're going to want to do that each time you get to the 50, and then once you're here, back on that. You know, if you didn't get those kills, I wouldn't even really shoot at them because these guys are either living behind their gun on you, and in which case they're not doing the job on snake side, or they're worrying about snake side and they're kind of in a pinch from your pressure and those guys right in their face. Either way, you're back on this guy, and now you're either going to get a kill on this guy or you're going to bottle him up to get killed by your front players, and then you have to play half of the field over. And that's how you know you're going to win the game. So let's put this in the drill form. Basically, you need, you don't even need, uh, I don't know, more than one teammate. I would say you need a few barrels or maybe um, buckets that you put on top of flag poles on the ground. You could have uh, empty boxes of paint. Really whatever, as long as you can see it get hit, it makes some kind of noise, it moves, whatever downfield. Just some kind of object that you can kind of hide behind a bunker and it's like the profile of a person. You're going to be down on one side of the field, starting in the first insert bunker out, and you're going to put a bucket in your mirror, a bucket halfway between your mirror and home, a bucket in home, or maybe one of your friends who's shooting to stop you once you get into like level two of this drill, and then you're going to put a bucket in two different bunkers cross field. So level one of this drill for, let's say, you intermediate players, you're not playing rec ball or woods ball anymore, you've been playing for a year or two, and you're trying to figure out how to make your moves, make the best of them, not get to a spot and then just get bunkered out of it and have no clue why anyways. Your objective is going to be basically shoot at this outside barrel and run and gun into the next spot on that barrel, shoot it again and bump into the next spot and continue doing it until you're at the 50. The point of this is just remembering to contain your mirror while getting to the 50. Level two is adding your friend in the back center. Now you're going to shoot some of the barrel. When you hit it, you're going to either step out and wrap on your friend in back center or possibly up down if possible. You're going to either try to kill or put them in, go into the next spot and then right back on the barrel. Um, the next thing to do would be uh, well, I guess I should talk about this in step three. Um, step three, 
would be adding in the attempts for killing people cross field who aren't shooting at you. So you're going to shoot at your mirror, you're going to step out and put in your friend in back center, and then you're going to coast in the next bunker shooting cross field. You probably can't do that on this until you're in this gap right here. Shoot at your old mirror, wrap, put a few shots at your friend, and then come through just throwing a few balls in here. And remember, you don't come in here and sit there and shoot these two targets here until you hit them. You're just throwing a few at it, and as soon as you're back behind that bunker, you're switching over to hide your hopper from the person shooting at you in the middle, and make sure you're back on that containment job, number one job. Um, the final step you could add to this third part of the drill, and this would be the most advanced version of it, would be after you shoot the barrel and you fill out to this bunker, putting in a friend, fill out to this bunker shooting at this second barrel in the middle. Because if you've already hit this, rather than put him in, let's say, your next gap isn't shooting at this bunker. Now you're shooting an empty guy. Now every time you bump up the field, you're shooting at this barrel, representing the gap in the field that a center player is going to have to fill through for damage control to get back to the side. And you're just putting it on there, putting it on there, until you can wrap directly at him. If he's still shooting at you, all you do is sit and shoot here so he can't put you in and fully go. And then when you can, you wrap, you try to shoot at him because this is your friend really shooting at you. And you take another bunker if you put him in or kill him, and then you get back on that containment. So this is kind of like practicing for if there's maybe a back center doubled or even tripled up, and you kill a guy off the break. If I shoot this player off the break, and I'm a front or insert guy who's lost his front player, and I'm going out here, I'm not even shooting at the edge of this bunker anymore. I've already hit that guy. Now every time I move, I'm just shooting this wall right here where this bear would be and just waiting for one of these guys doubled up and pent up in the center to try to either fill out here for damage control or fill out of here because he's just losing space and he needs to get out of that bunker because he's, he's being pinched with his other teammate. Um, you know, he practiced his home, uh, or practice this drill at your local field with a buddy and, uh, you know, do it 30, 40, 50 times, just straight muscle memory. And you're going to find this is going to be very, very influential on your game. It's going to make things a lot easier for you. You're going to have a lot more control. You're going to see that you kind of run the pace and tempo of the field rather than winning through random spurts of luck or gunfights or shooting three feet, four people out of their spots. You're going to realize you're winning from your side over, and it's going to feel basically like cruise control.